Hi, we're Nisha and Mike, and today we're gonna share what the last year has looked like for us as we made the huge decision to renovate an old narrowboat so it can become our future tiny, floating, off-grid home. In March 2022, I found a boat for sale on eBay after much searching and decided to go for it. I had been in love with the idea of alternative living ever since I stayed in this cabin on someone's farm. It made me realise that a home didn't just have to be a house and that I really wanted to live in nature instead of the busy cities I spent my 20s in. And I wanted to live in a home that inspired me. But after realising just how difficult it is to find land and live off grid in the UK and then discovering the world of narrowboats with Mike, I decided to get a boat. Before meeting Mike, I had been looking into buying a house, so it seemed kind of crazy to everyone, and to me a bit too, to buy a boat instead. A boat that needed a complete restoration, especially when I had zero experience in DIY. Me and Mike are in a long distance relationship, and we both run businesses. But something in me really wanted to take on the challenge of building my own home with my own hands, and Mike said that he would take it on with me since it would eventually become a home for both of us. A home we can move around the country, a home on the water, submerged by nature. The boat was in Doncaster and would require five full eight to 12 hour days of cruising to get it to my hometown. Neither of us had ever cruised a boat before, but we saw it as an adventure, starting our first ever cruise on the tidal section of the River Trent. Thankfully, someone who worked for CRT showed us the basics and told us that we'd be totally fine doing the 100 mile trip ourselves, even though we had no experience and unknown to us, many boaters actually don't cruise on the tidal section of the River Trent as it can be pretty intimidating. I guess that's rivers in general, but I'm really thankful to Wilf, the CRT guy, for his confidence in us. If it hadn't been for him, we might have shied away from this journey and missed out on an incredible experience. I think the world needs more people like Wolf, who encourage you to believe in yourself, pursue your curiosity and give it a try, instead of telling you to listen to your fear. Fear and anxiety has tried to talk me out of so many things, but the voice of anxiety is not my voice. And it's not yours either. You can do hard or intimidating things, even if other people or your own brain says you can't.
Originally, we didn't think that we would rip out as much as we did. But the more we removed, the more we realised just how much work was needed. A lot of people ask why we didn't just get a shell instead of an old boat that needed so much restoration before we could even begin building and adding in new things and making it a home. And in all honesty, hindsight is a wonderful thing and I think in hindsight it would have been wiser to get a shell, it would have been a lot less work. We knew this was going to be a big project but we didn't realise how big until it began. After the rip out, we had to treat every inch of the boat for rust and then insulate. No one could have prepared us for just how long this would take. Next up was replacing the subfloor. The old subfloor had holes in it, so it had to go. After replacing the entire thing, we realised that the floor we installed was bending too much when Mike walked on it. So we had to take it all back up again, add more joists and then reinstall it. Then we began the hardest job of this entire project, repainting the boat. First, we spent two weeks sanding the old paint down. We didn't go right back to metal, we just wanted to get rid of all of the lumps and bumps, which to be honest, was the entire boat. It took two weeks of long, long days, and it's honestly one of the most physically exhausting projects either of us has ever done.
A few weeks later, we started painting over the grey oxide with undercoat and we replaced the old windows for new double glazed ones. Originally we wanted to keep the old windows but the latches were so rusty we had to use a hammer to open them and we found about eight or so of the windows were leaking so they all needed to be removed and resealed anyway so since that had to happen we decided it was the best time to replace the windows and we're both really glad that we did because not only do they make the boat look totally different but they are great at keeping the heat and the noise in. Next, Mike got started on the stud walls and we installed the lower halves of the side walls.
Tackling the engine bay was a bit of a nasty job because it's a very cramped space to work in, but it was fun when we did it together. I don't know many couples that take on a project like this before they are either living together or married, and a lot of people thought it was crazy and that it could be a potential relationship breaker. And while it is hard sometimes, I think it's really helped us learn more about each other. We've learned how to support each other when one of us is feeling the pressure, how to communicate better, how to turn mundane tasks into fun. And while I take my hat off to anyone that does a solo restoration, I'm really glad that I got to do it with Mike. Mike installed a diesel heater in the engine bay because even though we did remove a stove from this boat that we're going to reinstall after cleaning it up, we wanted more than one source of heat. After a year of restoration, it's finally time to move on to the exciting parts, making this boat a home. I started by lining the cupboards in our entryway with ply and cladding the ceiling. One of these cupboards is going to be the electrics cupboard, so it really needed to be done before we could move on to that huge project. Over the next few months, we'll be tackling the electrics and also the plumbing, cladding the rest of the walls, installing the kitchen, the bathroom, and more. It's all feeling like it's happening at once and it's really exciting. We are so thankful to everyone who has come along with us for the journey. And if you're new here and you would like to join us for this journey, we'd love to have you. So maybe consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you clicked like because that helps our channel hopefully get out there and inspire more people, which is our goal. This journey has taught us so many new skills and life lessons. It's reminded me how resilient I can be. It's brought to the surface the limiting stories that I tell myself so that I can change the narrative and change my perspective. Even vlogging this journey here on YouTube has showed me that I didn't really like how I was showing up, how I had become a bit of a shell of who I used to be. I am not shy about tackling big things or doing big things even alone. I lived in New York and London alone. I traveled to Bali alone. I started a business alone. And yet when I watched these vlogs, I didn't like that I couldn't see that confident woman anymore. And so this project and this vlog really started leading me back to her. Thank you for being here with us on this adventure. We hope you'll stick around to watch the rest of this build, especially now the exciting stuff is right around the corner. We love you and we'll see you in the next vlog. Goodbye to